everyone, how are we all? I hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to my channel and to another recipe video. I'm very excited about this one because I feel like we're in my comfort zone. We're in the place that I am most happy in, and that is the kitchen cooking pasta. I absolutely love pasta and as you can tell by the title, this is gonna be three delicious, super easy pasta recipes that you can create at home. They're comforting, they're warm, they're delicious, and they just make you feel good. Uh, all veggie, all the ingredients, as always, will be linked down below, so you can find out all of the quantities and replicate and create them along at home. And if you do, don't forget to let me know in the comments how you found them, and also tag me on Instagram, I'll leave my handle on the screen. Right, without further ado, let's get into it. So recipe number one is gonna be a, like a take on a carbonara, but it's gonna be more like a creamy spaghetti pasta. Um, so here's all the ingredients you're gonna need. So for this pasta, the base is butternut squash. We also have one white onion and three garlic cloves. These are kind of small, so if you've got larger ones, you can do two. We've also got some cashew nuts and some sage leaves. These are fresh sage leaves, some salt and pepper, a vegetable stock cube, some extra virgin olive oil, some spaghetti, but if you don't have spaghetti, you could use any pasta you like, tagliatelle, rigatoni, anything that you like, and some parmesan of your choice. I'm using grana padano. And that is everything, super easy, so let's get into it. First, start off by adding your olive oil to a pan around a medium heat and then pop your sage leaves into the pan. You don't want them to be too crispy, but you do want them to crisp off beautifully. And then have a piece of kitchen towel to the side and transfer your sage leaves to that. Then finally chop up your onion. I just slice it one way, then half ways, and then dice it up until it's nice and fine. And then I did the same with the garlic, just removed the skins, topped and tailed it, and then roughly chopped that up too. And then I peeled the butternut squash using a speed peeler. This can take a while, and I didn't use the whole butternut squash. Whatever you don't need, you can just pop in a freezer bag and bang that in the freezer for another time. I transferred that to a heat-proof microwavable bowl and added the cashew nuts, and then covered that in boiling water for around 30 seconds, drained it, and then covered it in cling film, make sure it's nice and covered, and then pop that into a microwave for around five, five and a half minutes, depending on the power of your microwave, it might need less. Remove the cling film and just leave that to steam. This just cooks the cashews and the butternut squash. Then when the oil was nice and hot, I added the onion to the olive oil and just stirred all that. Then I added the garlic once the onion had softened. And then I added some chili flakes. I know I didn't specify this in the recipe initially, but the chili was very welcome. Then I seasoned my pasta water and then popped the butternut and the cashew into the onion, garlic and chili. And then I added the pasta to the pasta water adding some of the pasta water into the butternut sauce and then pop that into a blender. Now you do need a fairly powerful blender for this. Start off just by pulsing it and then blend it until you've got a fairly smooth sauce. Transfer that back to your pan and then just leave that to blip away on a very low heat until your pasta is cooked and then just transfer the pasta straight into the butternut. The excess water on the pasta will make a lovely sauce. Season it with pepper and lots of freshly grated parmesan and then just stir all that together Together until you've got a beautifully creamy silky butternut sauce look at that color finish it off with extra parmesan if you like who doesn't and then top it with those crispy sage leaves this was just so so delicious and that chili really worked with the sage and butternut it was sublime Okay guys, so it is meal two of the three pasta dishes and this one is a firm favorite. It's kind of like a twist on a classic cheesy um, pasta bake, but we're gonna do it with a lovely leek base with some white wine and Dijon mustard. So it's like a leaky penne pasta bake. So let me show you what you need. So these are all your ingredients, really classic pasta cheesy sauce ingredients. So we're gonna use 500 grams of leeks, need some plain flour, unsalted butter and milk, so that forms like the base of your white roux. And then obviously it needs to be cheesy, so we're using cheddar and parmesan. If you want to make this strictly vegetarian, you can leave out the parmesan and replace it with a veggie parmesan. We've got some salt, some Dijon mustard, some dry white wine, or you can use vermouth if you have that, fresh black pepper, and any pasta of your choice, I'm using penne. So first start off by topping and tailing your leeks, splitting them down the middle and giving them a good rinse and then just roughly chop them up. They don't have to be too perfect, just as long as they're roughly equal size. Add them into a pan with some water and your white wine until the leeks are covered. Season them with some salt, give them a little stir and then you wanna pop the lid on and cook them for about 15 minutes until they're lovely and soft. Then add some water to a pan and bring that up to a boil, season the water. While the water's coming up to the bowl, grate your cheese of choice. I used a mixture of cheddar 
and Parmesan and I had some leftover um, Emmental in the fridge I added too. Checked on the leeks to make sure they were cooking lovely. When they were nice and soft, I drained them through a colander into the dish I was cooking the pasta in just to save on the washing up. <laughs> I kept the white wine pasta water, which we'll come back to. Then in the pan, once that's had the leeks removed, melt your butter. Add your flour and stir that together until you've got your lovely paste. This forms the base of your roux. And then add your milk, change to a whisk and whisk that together until you've got a lovely smooth sauce. Don't add the milk all at once. Then add your Dijon mustard and whisk again and have faith the sauce will thicken. Then add your penne or pasta of choice and cook that. Don't cook it fully, cook it until it's just below packet instructions because it will continue cooking in the oven. Then add your cheese to your lovely thickened sauce and stir all that together until you've got a beautifully creamy cheese sauce and then add that lovely leek wine liquor that you saved from earlier and stir that through your cheese sauce. Again, it might look quite thin, but once you add that to the oven, it will thicken up, season it, then check your pasta, see how that's doing and reserve some of the pasta water. Then add in your cooked leeks to your sauce and then add your drained pasta and stir all that together. You'll see what I mean now, the sauce has thickened up beautifully and stir your lovely, lovely pasta through and then pop that into the bacon dish that we used earlier. See, saving on washing up. And then I do recommend popping it onto a bacon sheet just because this does have a tendency to overflow. This is quite a big portion. I also finished it with some cheddar and some breadcrumbs. I know I didn't initially say about the breadcrumbs, but they were just in the cupboard. Just gave a lovely crunch. I baked that for around 40 to 45 minutes until the top was beautifully golden brown. And look at that cheese sauce. It is just bubbly and blipping away. It was app. Absolutely gorgeous. This is definitely one to try and it can easily feed about eight people. Okay, so this is the third and final pasta recipe and I'm almost embarrassed at how easy this recipe is. It is just so deliciously tasty combining like four or five ingredients for a gorgeous hybrid between a vegetarian carbonara and a cacio e pepe which translates to cheese and pepper and pasta. So here's the ingredients. So this, this is it. This is your ingredients list. Black pepper, you're gonna need a lot of black pepper. So if you have a pepper grinder, freshly ground would be great. Your choice of long pasta. So we've got bucatini or spaghetti, either or. I'm gonna use bucatini and maybe a little bit of spaghetti too. Some good quality extra virgin olive oil, the best that you can afford, ideally. Three egg yolks, and your choice of hard cheese. We're using Grana Padano, which isn't traditionally vegetarian, but you can use vegetarian hard cheese, vegan hard cheese if you can get your hands on it, or a good quality Parmigiano or Reggiano. And that's it. Okay, so start off by separating three large free range eggs. Keep the whites separate. You can use those for meringues or anything, to be honest. Then with the yolks, just beat them with a fork until they're lovely and smooth. And then use your hard cheese of choice. Like I said, I'm using Grana Padano. It's just got a lovely, nutty, salty flavor. And I microplaned it, so it's nice and fine. The finest setting on a cheese grater would be best. Then add some boiling water to a fairly small pan. Season it generously. Now, we're using a small pan, and I will tell you why in a little while. Then add lots of freshly cracked black pepper to your egg yolks. More pepper, the better, and then add your finely grated Parmesan and stir that until you've got a relatively thick paste. It doesn't have to be too smooth at this point, don't worry. Then add your pasta to your pasta water. I'm using a mixture of bucatini and spaghetti. Then add some good quality extra virgin olive oil to a pan and reserve some of that pasta water. Now, I'm using a small pan because the pasta water will be more starchy, which when you add it to the milk and cheese forms a lovely thick creamy sauce. Don't add the boiling water straight away because it can actually scramble your egg yolks. By that time your pasta should be cooked. Again, you want it to be nice and al dente. Transfer that straight to your hot oil, not too hot, and just coat that in the oil and then turn your heat off and add your lovely peppery egg yolk and parmesan. Don't add add any more heat to this pan otherwise it can scramble the eggs and just stir all that together the oil with the eggs and the cheese and the pasta water just make a beautifully creamy peppery sauce and that's it that is literally a take on a carbonara cacio e pepe just serve it in a bowl as much as you'd like with extra parmesan on top and freshly grated black pepper and that's it it is just delicious it's so simple but it's just beautiful So that is everything. I really hope you've enjoyed these three pasta recipes. They're really, really good to try. And if you do try them at home, absolutely do let me know in the comments how you found them. And if you do manage to take a photo, tag me on Instagram. Enjoy it and I'll catch you all very soon. Take care. Bye for now.